Good day. Today's going to be a very quick hit video on how to create viewports. And the idea is to talk about how viewports and how you can control views within the viewports. So what I've got here is I've got a 3D model that I created individual views from on the screen. And we're going to be taking these individual views, putting them on a layout, and then controlling what is viewed in each of the viewports based on the layers that we place the objects on. It's called viewport layering. And that's pretty much the quick hit that we're going to be focusing on. So the first thing I need to do is make sure that my objects are on individual layer environments. So I'm going to go to Layer Properties. And you can see that I've got a bunch of general layers, but now I'm going to set up a few specific layers that we are going to work with. So I'm going to go ahead and set up a layer for top object, set up another layer for top hidden, and one for top dimension. And I'll do the same thing for front. I won't do it for the side so you can see what what happens when you don't set up the layers properly and have that control. So the control is actually down here towards the end and it's back in the new VP freeze. Okay, that's where the control of the layers are. It's called viewport freeze and viewport thaw is the actual settings. And so it's not just turning the layers on and off and it's not just freezing the layers but we're going to be controlling what layers are viewed in which viewports on layouts. So I've got all these. I'm going to go ahead and change the colors just so you can see uh, when I apply a layer change. So all the top layers are going to be in the shade of blue. And I think I'll change the hidden line layers to a darker shade of blue along the same realm. Oops, wrong side. There it is. So 142, 146. The front objects I'll leave, but I'll change the front hidden, and we'll make that a, a greenish color, darker green color for the front hidden. But the object and the dimensions, I can change the dimension here to more of a magenta, darker magenta color, so it's unique also. That one's 212, that's 224, that's pretty close. We can actually make that a little bit more bright and that'll be pretty close um, actually it might be too close so let's go ahead and change that out and make it very dark so it'll be a dark purple then so that's how we're going to set that up so I'm going to create a few dimensions we'll show you how to move it around and change the objects so we're good to go on the layers we've set up all the layers and let's move to the next step I'm going to go ahead and put a couple of dimensions on, and right now we're on the dimension layer. I'm going to purposely do oh, up the layer. Oh, yeah. So here's the deal this is a three dimensional layout, and so right now the XYZ is not oriented properly with the screen, and hence that's the reason why the dimension popped up over on the side and not on the object, because it is truly a 3D environment. So for me to make this work, I am going to have to change the user coordinate system. And so changing the UCS comes in a variety of different ways. We have the UCS icon, which is on or off. Uh, OK, so the UCS commands were once found under the View tab, but they've moved. And even the help tells you that it's under the View tab. Why? Because I looked. But here's the real answer. You need to right mouse click, go to show tabs, and you need to turn the visualize tab on. That's where the UCS tools are located. So under visualize, you'll find that we have coordinates, and under the coordinates we've got a series of user coordinate system settings that we can change the UCS. Wow! 
So needless to say, it has changed quite a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and use UCS 3-point to set up my user coordinate system. So I'm going to pick 3-point. And the first point I'm going to pick here is at the corner. The second point is positive x. The third point is positive y. So you can see what happened is that we now have the grid. And I can go ahead at the bottom and turn the grid off so you can see what's going on. So I've, I set the user coordinate system and we can only work in the X and Y plane. So I'm going to go back to the Home tab and now um, put in a linear dimension here as I was expecting to previously. So I'm not going to put in a lot of dimensions but I am going to set it up to where we can see and with the UCS now set properly we can see where the dimensions are. I'm going to change this dimension to top dimension. So top dimension and this dimension to front dimension and these two lines to top hidden and the rest of the lines and I'll fix top hidden here in just a second because it didn't show up as a hidden line and the rest of the lines to top object and I'll do the same thing here so I'm going to pick all the object lines that comprise of the front object and notice that I individually selected them so I would not select the hidden lines or the dimensions so I purposely selected it individually. And we'll put these also on the front hidden. So you can see that it's taken the color but the hidden lines are not showing up just yet. So to make the hidden line show up I go into layer properties, front hidden, instead of continuous I'm going to choose hidden 2 and in, scroll this down so top hidden will again be hidden too. And when I'm finished, they both should now show back up with hidden lines. And they do. Perfect. So here's the deal. We have to show these particular objects in viewports. And so what we're going to do is select Layout 1. And this happens to be an A size sheet of paper. And it's blank. I don't have a title block or anything on it and you can easily bring in a title block with a template, but I wanted to show you a clean viewport environment. So we've got one viewport set, which is here. It's the overall viewport, and you're seeing everything in that viewport. Everything is visible. All the lines, all the details, all of it is, is available. So I'm going to show you how to create viewports, and viewports are actually found here under view. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this viewport and we are going to have to create a viewport. Ah, Layout viewports are found under the layout tab, kind of hiding up here in the corner next to BIM 360. Threw me for a second. But the layout tab is where all the viewports are located. We're going to create a, uh, a series of three viewports. Now I can do projected viewports and when I have 3D objects, you can use the projected tools. So I'm going to just create, I can create a base viewport um, from Model Space or Inventor, or I can create a rectangular viewport. In either case, uh, it might be easier just to create a rectangular viewport first, just to show you what's going to show up. So I can create three different rectangular viewports. Um, now, each one should be and I'm doing the side one the more appropriate way which is projecting from the side view over to get the proper sizing so that way I have the appropriate height for each of the viewports. Is it critical? Not dramatically but it is nice to have the viewports aligned and when they're not aligned it is a little bit more difficult. So I just align that one. And so we're going to take this one, highlight, bring it straight up, 
Now we just align that and we can shrink it. Perfect. So you can see that all the drawings are exactly the same in each view. But in this view, I just want to get the top view. So I'm going to actually double click in. Let me hit the escape key first. Double click in. And I'm going to magnify and then use pan just to get the top view to be showing up here. In the front view, I'm going to get just the front view to show up in the viewport. Move it around. But the problem is, is that it doesn't always align properly. Okay, and that's part of the trick with the whole system is getting things to line up appropriately. Because you have to get the right scaling factors for all these to work. And that may mean that your viewports are going to have to be expanded or increased or decreased to make that happen. And once you increase a viewport, you'll have to increase, in this case, the side viewport, so the side is the same size as the front. And this one, again, we'll double click in, magnify, and set that up. And we'll work on scaling in just a second. All right, so the other aspect that I was talking about is that we wanted to have viewport layer freeze. So viewport layer freeze, we're going to have to move back to home. And under the layer properties, you'll notice that it is freeze here. But we also have match layers, thaw all layers, isolate, um, lock and unlock. But there's nothing about viewport layer freeze. Well, they're kind of stored under here. VP phrase in all viewports except for the current. Ooh. So if I double click here, um, in this viewport, this will freeze all the layers except for what's in my current viewport. This one will allow me to manage it. Or I can go to the layer properties and manage it independently. So if in the front view, or excuse me, in the top view, I'm working with the top hidden and so forth, those are the ones that I want to keep. So everything else, I want to freeze. So that's all viewport plot style and viewport freeze. You can see that there's a lot of options here. And there's viewport new freeze and viewport freeze. Well, what's the difference? The difference is in viewport, in new viewport freeze, it'll freeze these layers that I select in any new viewport I create. On the other hand, I prefer to control based on viewport freeze. So all these, I want to turn these and freeze them. And so I selected them all by holding the shift key down, clicked one, froze it, and let's see what happens. So I froze all the layers except for the top layers. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm inside there and I'm going to go ahead and bring this out and take a look. There's nothing else in the view. To prove that it's still there, I just move that down. So realistically, everything in this view has now been hidden or frozen except for the items or the layers that I selected. So that's called viewport layer freeze. We'll do it once more. So I'm in the front view this time. And you can see that I can see all the objects. I'm going to freeze everything else except for the front object here. Select the layer properties. Everything else except for the front dimension. I'm going to hold the control key down and select all these. And I use the control key and selected those. I'm going to viewport freeze them. So you can see all of them have a snowflake now. And the only ones that have a sunshine are the three front layers that I move the objects to. Let me move this out of the way and check it out. They're all gone. All the other items on that screen are gone that are not anything else outside of those three layers are turned off or frozen. 
that doesn't mean that they're gone forever. They're still on the model tab. They're actually still visible in the right side. But now I can control and set scales and align these particular views appropriately. So in this view, I've got it as a 0.1 scale. Um, let's see here, 0.1 scale. Let's see if we want to do this. Uh, we'll go to about 12%. We can probably go a little bit higher. There's 1 to 5. Perfect. So we'll go this to 1 to 5. If I double click in here, I should be able to go to 1 to 5. Bring it down. And they are the same scale now. So I've now controlled scale by double clicking in the viewport and changing the scale of the view. For alignment purposes, there's a couple of tricks. I usually double click out onto the screen and leave the viewports on the screen. What I'll do, notice that I can connect to the object and I can draw a line. So that line is now out on the screen. It's not frozen, it's not in a viewport, it's actually over the viewport. Double click in the view, take and move the object so the object aligns. So you can see that the objects themselves are aligned now between the viewports. And ultimately, you can also see that none of the objects that were frozen are visible in the viewports themselves. That pretty much wraps up Viewport Freeze on this quick hit video. Have a great day.